Well, good evening. This is another map show, and it's exciting to have you joining us wherever you might be joining from all over the world. Map for Life is in over 100 countries, and just like you, there are people out there wanting to make life purposeful. So I'm excited to have you joining me on this uh, wonderful evening. And if you're watching the recording, Please share your comments, uh, share this link with others uh, so that they can also be inspired to change. Uh, the topic this evening is one of those topics that may be uh, a little bit concerning to people who've heard the statement that quitter, winners never quit and quitters never win. Well, I want to tell you there are things that you need to quit in order to win in terms of your purpose in life. And I trust that tonight we'll continue on what we discussed in Map Show 130. So tonight is Map Show 131, and we are well on our way to our third year of sharing map stories and talks with you. So tonight, as we continue, on from where we left off on our previous session, which covered the letters A through to the letter Q. <laughs> and interestingly, when we talked about the letter Q, I said, I'm going to quit quitting. And I think so many people need to quit quitting, especially when it comes to implementing new habits. You know, when you make a decision to introduce something new in your life, you need to make a firm and complete commitment to follow through. Because, you know, if you set yourself up for success, if you focus on starting a habit and make it easy in the beginning and you work with that habit to the point where you begin to enjoy it, when you get to that level of enjoyment, the performance takes care of itself. So I trust that as I share these ideas with you, you're going to find or think of things that maybe you could add to the list of things that we need to quit. And uh, once I finish sharing with you, I've got a good friend all the way from Leidenberg, a man who quit making excuses a long time ago. <laughs> and so he's joining me tonight when all other people will be using the traditional excuse. He is not, he's making a plan. So Rion, I look forward to chatting to you after this and to anyone else who's joining with us. Uh, I look forward to engaging with you. So when it comes to the letter R, I want to quit feeling rejected. I don't know if you've ever had somebody say, <laughs> say something to you which makes you feel like you've been rejected. Well, I have decided I'm going to quit feeling rejected. And instead of feeling rejected, I'm going to be revitalized, refocused, re-energized. And I'm going to become more engaged in the vision that I have been given. I remember uh, about a year ago, somebody who I'd been working with quite closely to discuss a particular event that we were going to hold. I was excited about this event and uh, we had given it a name. The speakers had been set. And a week or two weeks prior to the event, the announcement was, oh, by the way, <laughs> I can't be a speaker. And I, I, in that moment, said, fantastic, great. <laughs> now, that wasn't, that, wasn't, uh, that wasn't me feeling fantastic and great at all. I felt an absolute slap in the face and, and complete rejection. But I trained myself to respond differently. No longer was I going to become a person who succumbs to rejection. And when other people use the tool of rejection to, to make a point, I wasn't going to be influenced that, 
anymore. And I want to encourage you to stop succumbing to rejection. Quit succumbing to rejection. And in that moment where you feel like you deserve to feel rejected, <laughs> and you probably have been, ignore that. Focus on being revitalized, re-energized, get excited about the future. Turn that negative energy into something positive and powerful. And I believe you can. I'm going to quit focusing on the idea of success so that I can build my status, so that I can have a name for myself, so that I can tell everyone else how good I am, how many days I've been doing my habit every single day, how many fancy people I've sat next to in my life. <laughs> I'm going to quit chasing success. I'm going to quit chasing status. I am unique. I'm a one of a kind, the only Glenn McQuirk that you will find on the planet. And you are the only person you are. There's no one else like you. You are a unique masterpiece. <laughs> and you cannot be there chasing after success because that means you are ignoring the fact that you are a masterpiece, a one of a kind. And you're starting to compete against other people. You're comparing yourself to others. You and I were born not to chase after our own success and status, but to be significant, to do something that's going to have an impact in the lives of others where we fade away. Where it's not about us anymore. It's not about me anymore. It's about others. And so I'm going to quit chasing after success and status and start focusing on significance. The word significance contains your signature. Your signature is unique to you. A signet ring signifies something, a sign that you see on a building. <laughs> All of these things come from the same root word, which is uh, in Latin. It's the, the seed. Significance is contained in something insignificant. I mean, you think about the giant baobab tree. <laughs> I don't even know what its seed looks like, but I know its seed is smaller than the tree by many times. So remember that significance is often overlooked because it looks different to the tree. <laughs> the seed looks different to the tree and it is minute. It looks completely under-resourced. Meanwhile, it is abundantly resourced. And so your idea, that seed that you have, that's in your heart, that's been placed there by your creator himself, that seed is one of great significance that will do marvelous things on this planet. I was in East London, my hometown, uh, some years ago, and there was a young man who had helped me to put together my first presentation. Can you imagine? <laughs> I had done a presentation in PowerPoint. This young man was able to create it in Flash. I don't even know if anybody knows what Flash is, but Flash was something <laughs> that enabled you to do a presentation and, and pass it on to share it with other people. I was still protective of what I was doing, uh, so protective that I wanted to be able to share my presentation with other potential trainers and coaches in such a way that they could not change it. <laughs> and so he put my entire presentation into this Flash program so that people could use it, but they couldn't change it. And uh, he worked hard for me, you know, for, he, he worked long hours for, uh, for 10 days and he completed a great job. And some years later, I went to East London and I was doing a map talk on a Saturday morning at a botanical type garden. And while I was there giving this talk, at the end, he shared something with us that was so powerful. And it ties in with the letter T today. He said, why take offense when you can take down the fence? And I thought, wow, <laughs> he has a 20-year-old, a 20-something young man giving such powerful advice. So I want to quit taking offense. In fact, 
You, so many people say that person offended me. You think like, nobody can offend you <laughs> because the very language itself says you take offense. Offense is not bestowed upon you. You take it and you choose to take it. I'm going to quit taking offense and I'm going to I'm going to work on taking down the fence instead. Let's remove the barriers, the things that divide us, the things that tear us apart. <laughs> instead of taking offense, take down the fence. And that is something that you have to initiate. I'm going to quit being unlimited. Sorry, is that right? <laughs> Maybe that doesn't sound right at all. Um, you know, I think, I think the fact that we think we are limited is the thing that I want to quit. And I want to be unlimited in my thinking, unrestricted in my thinking. So often we seem to be under something especially the circumstances have you ever found somebody there <laughs> i so often find people and uh, you ask how how are you today and that's the wrong question to ask by the way <laughs> but when you make the mistake of asking that question you usually get the right kind of answer to that question and that is the an answer that precedes with the statement under the circumstances under the conditions under all my complaints I'm actually doing very well. If you were in my situation, <laughs> I don't think you would be surviving as I am. So really, I'm great. I mean, that's what people are trying to tell you when they say that, when they talk about under the circumstances. So instead of being under the circumstances, I want to be unlimited. I want to look beyond the circumstances. I want to see, you know, under the circumstances is a gray sky zone. It always looks like it's going to rain. It always looks like bad weather. I want to rise above the circumstance where it's blue sky and sunshine. That's the place. And when the sun passes to the other side of the planet, it's nothing but beautiful starlight that can guide you towards your destiny. I want to quit listening to the voice in my head that says I can't. A friend of mine once, and I, I read it in a book, and I heard it from a friend. So it has been widely distributed, and you probably have heard this as well. <laughs> and he said, you know, when two dogs are fighting, which one wins? And the answer was, the one you feed the most. <laughs> and he was talking about these two voices that you have inside your head, the one that says, I can, and the one that says, I can't. You know, we can feed the one I can't. All we have to do is watch the media, watch the news, read the headlines, listen to the negative people out there. And when you do, you're feeding the wrong, the wrong dog, as it were. And that one becomes stronger and stronger. And you become more and more pessimistic and less and less optimistic. Your dreams become smaller. They begin to shrink to your low expectation. Let's change it. Let's stop listening to the voice that says, I can't. Let's stop being directed by other people's ideas. Let's become absolutely founded on strong, certain, biblical values and principles. And I think if we have a strong value base, then those voices... I was trying to think of a, a, a so-called African proverb. It kind of says, it's not, this, isn't, this isn't the proverb, but it's, it sort of says, if you have a fire within, the fire outside can do you no harm. It reminds me of my grandfather, you know, when there was a big fire that we just couldn't control. The, we would res, the last resort would be to start another fire. And we would begin another fire that would burn back to the one that we couldn't stop. And fire, you fight fire with fire sometimes. And so in a sense, that message is that the passion, when you have passion inside of you, it doesn't matter what fire comes your way because you have a fire that will overcome that one. I want to quit waiting. And start working towards my vision and dream. I, I've often found myself 
waiting, <laughs> waiting for the right time, waiting for the right people, waiting for somebody to finish what they're supposed to do, waiting for money to come in, waiting for the circumstances to be right, waiting for me to be ready, waiting to lose weight, waiting to do something. I don't know what it is that you're waiting for, but we seem to spend our lives waiting. <laughs> I remember reading a story once where a person talked about the fact that we set an alarm to wake us up in the morning. And uh, the we, we actually wake up before the alarm goes off. And when the alarm goes off, we hit the snooze button. So we've been lying, waiting for the alarm to go off. Then we hit the snooze button. We have the five minutes best sleep of the whole night. And the alarm goes off again. <laughs> then we get up and we switch on the kettle and we wait for the kettle to boil. We put the tea in the teapot. We wait for the tea to to draw before we pour it. We we run the hot water. We wait for the bath to fill. I don't know. We seem to be waiting for everything. We get into our car. We drive up to the traffic light. We wait for the traffic light to change. We get to the office. We wait for someone to open the door. We get into the office. We open the newspaper and we read every negative thing we can while we wait for the clock to go eight o'clock so we can start working. Then we wait for tea time. We wait for lunch time. We wait for afternoon tea. We wait for the end of the day. And then we repeat the whole process says heading back to home we get into bed ultimately and then we wait to fall asleep <laughs> we're spending our life waiting i think we need to quit waiting and start doing something start working not and when i say working towards doing the thing that you are purposed to do this is a good and worthy pursuit so let's quit waiting and start working I want to quit. I want to quit dreaming about being the next X Factor winner. You know, um, I don't know if any of you have watched uh, uh, these. Uh, they used to call them idols or something in the old. And what an appropriate, what an appropriate word, idol. I mean, we we idolize so many things in our lives. But there was this thing called idol. Interestingly, I just discovered last week that. Uh, one of the people that uh, an event that I attended with a person only South Africans will know, uh, Heinz Winkler. You may have heard his name at some point. He, I think he won the first idols competition in South Africa. My daughter wanted to see him. I was invited to donate Map for Life books at this big event. Heinz Winkler was the big draw card. And uh, we came all the way from East London to Johannesburg to be part of this particular event. And you know, such a, a different kind of guy. He, he certainly wasn't the idol that they were trying to make him out to be. And so many people thought he was. But today he's a pastor of a church down in Cape Town. And one of our soon-to-be trainers <laughs> works with him. Isn't it amazing? I mean, you know, so we've got all of these people standing in queues. They want to be the next idol winner. They want to be the next uh, America's got talent, Britain's got talent, South Africa's got talent, whatever kind of country you name it, there's a talent show of some kind. The X factor. They want to be the one with it. I want to quit striving for somebody else to recognize that I am different. I think every single one of us, by our uniqueness, has something different. So instead of aspiring to be recognized by someone else, I'm going to use the other X that I have and that you have. And that is my ability to imagine. I would like to call it X-ray vision. <laughs> Kind of the Superman thing, you know, you look through the wall, see what's beyond on the other side and imagine that it is real and it is real. If you can see it with your mind's eye, it's as real as the things around you today. Remember that everything that you're wearing, the building that you're sitting in, the chair that you're on, the table in front of you, the, the, the digital device that you're using to watch the show, all of these things are in the present because in the past they were present in the mind of someone else. So right now the things that do not exist, that will exist in the future, are present in the minds of people. What appears to be imagination in your mind right now is a reality in a person in the future's life. So the future is 
present right now <laughs> in the hearts and minds of people. The new things that you see that get developed, that appear on the market, those are old. They were in somebody's mind a long time ago. So the question is, what is your imagination giving you? What is your x-ray vision showing you? Because we need to use and to exercise this x-ray vision that we've been blessed with. We have the ability to see the the unseen scene <laughs> that will appear on the scene so that other people can see the scene that you saw. I mean, that's such a real thing for me and for you. We've got two letters left. And the why, the first thing that comes to mind is yellow. <laughs> and yellow, you know, um, well, I'm not talking about the yellow submarine. I think that was that had a different connotation. But when people talk about you being yellow or me being yellow, what they're saying is that you are being cowardly. You are shrinking away from your responsibility. You are believing other people's nay. You believing the naysayers that say it can't be done. You know, so often the people that prevent you from stepping out courageously are the ones closest to you. So make sure you surround yourself with people who believe in your vision and dream. Those who do not can only hinder you, can hold you back, maybe even cause you not to pursue your vision, and as a result, being cowardly or yellow, as I used over here. So instead of being in that place where you don't take the step that you need to take and shrinking it back and waiting for a more auspicious occasion or time, start saying yes to your vision. Start saying yes to your dream. Start saying yes to your unfolding future. As my good friend Les Brown says in his video, you deserve. <laughs> Begin to say yes. You, there, there was a guy here in South Africa called the Yes Man. His name was Mike Lipkin. <laughs> He, he ended up uh, moving to Canada, I believe. But Mike Lipkin contributed to one of the first Map for Lives. And he was on, uh, he was telling everybody about this idea of saying, yes, yes, you can. Why not believe the yes? And finally, I'm going to quit the zone, the zone of comfort, the zone of mediocrity. The zone where everyone else is telling me it can't be done. The zone where people think about their own country and not the others. The zone where people concern themselves with only their family and not the next door neighbor. The zone where everything revolves around me, myself, and I. I'm going to quit that zone. I'm going to quit the comfort zone. And I'm going to go beyond the comfort zone. I'm going to have a zenith, you know, a, a point that I look up to. I'm, I'm, going to, I'm, going to, I'm going to seek divine inspiration. I'm not going to look around at the crowd around me and associate with people in the comfort zone anymore. You see, there are many things that you and I might find ourselves practicing that could be keeping us from being all that we were born to be. And so tonight's talk and the previous map talk, map talk number 130, were designed to provoke thought, to inspire you to consider for a moment that just maybe you're not perfect, <laughs> just maybe <laughs> there's something that you are doing that you need to quit doing so that you can be released. No, here's a better word. That you can be unleashed. That you can be deployed. That you can do some constructive damage to the world system that we find ourselves in. In such a way that it is transformed powerfully. And that it becomes focused on raising each individual to their purpose and passion in life. Because if we do that, we complete one another. And for me, there can be nothing more valuable to do with one's life. After all, everything that you pursue that's for yourself ends up 
in a box <laughs> or an urn. And it's either going to be scattered or it's going to be kept somewhere and soon forgotten. But what you put in the hearts and minds of people are going to inspire others to continue to move forward and to become all they were born to be. Thank you so much for, for being part of this talk, for listening to the recording, for participating, sharing your ideas. Uh, Rian and Marvin are going to be joining me after a short break. And we're going to talk because I am absolutely certain that there are many things that they have that they're going to share that we could actually legitimately quit and things that maybe we should be starting. So thank you so much. We will see you in 40 seconds from now. You've just seen me. I'm back, but I'm going to be welcoming Rion and Marvin on screen. Uh, before I do that, uh, Simbo Msangi, great to have you joining us tonight. Uh, we'd love to hear your comments or any questions or ideas that you have. Uh, I'm sure they will be uh, thought-provoking. We'd love to hear from you. So, uh, Rion and Marvin, here they are. They're going to join me on screen, and uh, I trust that as we... Uh, engage in this conversation and just by the way for those of you who are uh, experiencing a, a slight delay in what you're hearing or seeing in South Africa right now we are busy transitioning from <laughs> the old cable power system <laughs> We're moving to Wi-Fi for electricity. Okay, so just just wait for it. <laughs> we are busy inventing something here in South Africa that's going to blow the world away. Um, and but while we do that, there are a few little teething problems. So you know, some things slow down a, <laughs> a little bit. And uh, Rian and Marvin know exactly what I'm talking about. So Rian, welcome. Great to have you joining us from Leidenburg. And uh, Marvin, uh, welcome from. I'm not too sure whether you're in in Silverton, Pretoria this evening, or whether you might be on travels, but welcome, good to have you here. And uh, perhaps just, just briefly, uh, a, a quick intro from your side. Rion? Yes, thank you, Ben. Um, yeah, like you say, um, if, if I open the door, you will hear a new sound of South Africa, and that's all the generators around me <laughs> making a noise. But it's good to be here, and I, and I like what you said today, and uh, the theme that we have been following the past uh, week or so, of, of quitting, you know, of, of finishing the stuff we should not be busy with. But I'm from Leidenberg, like you said. I, uh, I'm very passionate about purpose, and uh, I like to live purposefully. Um, I sometimes fall into the rut, the, the routine rut of, of looking for excuses. Um, but uh, like you said in the beginning, recently I started uh, um, really putting a stop to it. In actual fact, this morning in my uh, prayer times, you know, uh, 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 the beginning of the week, I always like to just um, get a theme for the week. And the theme for this week was be your own change management. Uh, and, and the thing is, you know, there's a lot of changes in my life. And um, you sometimes think it's just a season. You're going to go back to whatever you've been in. And it's like God was just saying to me, you know, you are there. Accept it. And do the change management you always do want to do to other people. Do it to yourself. Be your own uh, victim or your own patient in this time. But but start getting used to it because the world is changing. And if you're not going to prepare yourself, you're not going to be ready. And I think part of that changing and preparedness is quitting. You know, you just you just you 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 mentioning so many things that are just making my mind run wild with all of the kinds of things that we should be quitting. And I, I, I the, the the thing that came to mind just right in the beginning was we need to quit panicking. You know, there's so many people that are panicking at the moment. They they anxious and all these kind of things. We should turn our our panic into preparation. You know, like Les Brown says, it's better to be prepared for an opportunity 
and not have one than to have an opportunity and not be prepared. So we should be turning our panic into preparation. And imagine if everybody started doing that. I mean, the, the amount of energy and ideas that could come up that we could come up with. Uh, you know, we, we can quit being the patient <laughs> and maybe start developing some patience uh, would be a, a good thing in, in some in some situations. So, uh, Rion, welcome. Good to have you here. I can't wait to uh, engage with you tonight. Uh, Marvin, welcome. Maybe just a quick word Thanks, of Glenn. intro from your side. <clears throat> Thanks. Uh, Thanks, Glenn. Greetings, everybody. My name is Marvin. I am in Pretoria today. Um, we are now in Murrayfield, Glenn, so we actually almost neighbors. Um, but yeah, I've been with MAP for a, uh, almost 10 years now. And um, I also, like Rian, have a passion for people, passion for purpose, helping those two match. So helping people find their purpose. And um, I look forward to talking about what to quit and what not to quit tonight. Well, you know what's interesting in Marvin is is uh, when you when you look at things, there's always two sides to a coin, isn't there? You know, um, and uh, I was uh, somebody was talking about the words that we speak are are sometimes a two-edged sword. <laughs> they cut both ways, you know. So sometimes you you speak a message. Uh, and I'm sure that you can relate. You know, you, you use words where you want to really get a point across to somebody that's harmed you in some way. <laughs> well, that doesn't look like you guys have ever done anything like that. But, you know, you, I'm sure you know somebody that's tried to harm you with words. But what's interesting is when, when you have that kind of approach and you speak a truth, that truth cuts your heart deeply very often because you realize the fact that you know <laughs> is because you have first-hand information uh, on these things. So I understand that's, that a lot of the things that I've talked about this evening and and last week uh, are two-edged sword. You know, some of these things we talk about quitting, maybe we need to think about that. But just, uh, I'm not too sure who typed this, but just to quickly repeat the, the, the words there, the first or the, the different letters, I think we had about nine letters left. So the letter R was rejection as opposed to revitalization. So instead of feeling rejected, let's turn it around and revitalize, re-energize. Um, shifting from success or status pursuits to focusing on significance. Uh, stop taking offense. That seems to be the flavor of the day. You know, He offended me. She offended me. <laughs> Stop taking offense. Leave the offense there. Well, let's take down the fence. Let's remove the barriers instead. Um, and then we talked about, I used the word unlimited. Well, <laughs> having limiting ideas as opposed to, you know, stop feeling like we are stuck inside a box and being limited by others and rather recognize our uniqueness. <laughs> the V was for listening to voices, the I can or I can't. Um, and rather having a solid foundation of values. And we need to maybe test those values from time to time because some, some of the values we have might be questionable values. I certainly find when I'm in a corner, uh, my true self comes out. And then, I'm, then I realize that I actually do have flaws. Wink, wink. Uh, <laughs> and then I talked about instead of waiting, Let's start working towards our dreams and goals. Let's stop striving for the X Factor medal and rather begin to use our X-ray vision and see things that are far beyond that. Quit um, <clears throat> being yellow or cowardly and start saying yes to the dream, the revelation that you've had. And then quit the zone. You know, let's get out, maybe get out the box. But if you do that, you need to have your true north. You need to have a zenith. You need someone, something to look up to. And I think the the idea that I wanted to get across there was let's be divinely inspired. Um, and let's seek to be divinely inspired. And I think that is probably the quest of everyone um, is to get to a point that they know that they know what their passion and purpose is and that they can commit fully to pursuing that. All right, so that's my say. I think I need to 
I'm just going to sit here now and listen because I know that uh, in Map for Life we have we are full of leaders from everywhere, all walks of life, and so I can now relax and let Rion and Marvin share some thoughts, ideas, questions, whatever you want to do. I will watch the comments. <laughs> I say, no, um, <clears throat> you never get started. You know, uh, the S for me also stands for seed, and um, for the past uh, in the past few days, I, I got involved with the, the time to rise in South Africa movement that we have here to really uh, return this country to, to to be to to be a godly godly country again. But what I learned is that. Um, you know, uh, you, you have spoken about seed today and you have sp spoken about last time. I know you like the seed, um, you know, to, uh, the comparison and the analogy. Um, and uh, when Jesus told the story about this, the sower, what was actually revealed to me this week by one of uh, the people I got to know now through time to rise is that, you know, there's three things that the seed does, uh, three phases. So you have the seed phase, you have the root phase, and then you have the um, fruit phase. So in the seed phase is when you plant the seed, like you said, it's small, it seems insignificant, but you're just getting your seed out there. You're just planting the idea. Then when it starts shooting the root, you start seeing your ideas and your purpose grow. And then obviously when it starts getting to fruit phase, then you start to see multiplication. Then you start seeing the, the harvest coming in. So when you were talking today about the seed uh, I was just thinking about that, um, you know, that we, we uh, and it also comes in with the patience and with the waiting that you have been uh, talking about. Um, but we need to keep on sowing the seed, you know. The seed in the ground, you know, it says some will fall in different areas, but some will fall in the good ground and then they will shoot their root. It will start growing, but at the stage it will not only grow, it will really start to the fruit phase and start multiplying. So um, I think we must we must quit looking. They they also say in the Bible, you know, if you always look over your shoulder for the rain to come, you will never sow, uh, sow one seed. So we need to quit looking back, seeing if it's going to rain, looking back, seeing how the ground is looking, how many seeds fell between the thistles and the thistles and how much fell on the rocks and all these things, how many birds are flying around eating the seeds. And we need to focus on going forward. We need to, like you said, you watch your true north and plow on, put that purpose seeds in the ground. Because if you always continue, you will be surprised within a short space of time, you will see some roots coming in. And you know what? In the right season, you will see the 30, the 60, and the 100-fold uh, harvest coming in. And um, that's a time that, that, that the fishes come in, and then the nets need to be ready. So I, 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 fully, I like the, 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 the seed example that you always use. And for me, it was just good to say, you know, because... We are looking for kingdom projects. We are looking for projects that people are really making an impact. But then we need to always know you need to, uh, to, to sow, you need to wait for the root, and then you quit waiting because then the fruit will come. So uh, that was for me just so that you can also add it onto your S. But that's not something to quit. That's something to, while you are quitting looking for success, you start looking for significance by keep on sowing. Well, I think, I mean, as, as I, uh, when I was looking up the origin of the word significance the, in Latin, the root word was seed. So I think it's a very powerful thing. And uh, <laughs> I was just sharing last night, uh, I was doing training with uh, um, somebody from Midrand and somebody from Manzini. So we have our first trainer just around the corner from you, uh, Rian in Swaziland or Eswatini as it is now known and um, and just so so exciting to share with them last night and I, I just I suddenly <laughs> recalled you know on the farm when I was a young guy now I know you keep calling me Wim so I'm 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 yeah. I'm older than you <laughs> but by just a little bit and you know what was amazing is on the farm Rian I mean you're not gonna believe this but on the farm, my grandfather used to plow certain fields with oxen. 
we had the, the oxen in front and and i and i was you know i i was never strong enough to keep that plow behind the oxen you know i was given the responsibility to walk in front and then i was scared of that side but i was alive as a young boy in the time of plowing with oxen can you believe it today we're in the in ai technology but my grandfather used to say what you've just said right now he said you know he used to say Last year we had floods. The year before there was disease. <laughs> the year before that there were locusts. And he would go through all these things and he said, but there's only one guarantee. And that is if I don't sow the seed, we will never have a harvest. <laughs> all of the other stuff might, could happen and, it, and it, it, it is, it's probable. But the one guarantee is that if I don't sow the seed, there will be, there will be no harvest. So, I agree fully with you, and I think we need to explore that further on another occasion. So thanks for bringing that into focus this evening. Marvin, you look desperate. You're saying, guys, please give me a chance. <laughs> all, map, stands, map stands for Marvin's action plan, didn't you know? <laughs> I have a young man that's behind me that's also keen to contribute, and I'm trying to well, contain his excitement to too. Perhaps be welcome to. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> a couple of things that stood out for me, uh, Glenn, is I love the way you 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 focusing on making it the shift from success to significance, and I always look at the significant side of things as being about others and success being about ourselves. And if I look at the other two letters, rejection and offense, rejection and offense is always things that pertain to ourselves. So the question that I would have is, who, who, who are you looking at? Are you looking at only you or are you looking at those around you? And what are you doing? What, what are you living life for? Is it just for yourself or is it really about others? Too often I've found um, it's so, and I just had a conversation before joining tonight with, with uh, one of our leaders. Uh, too often I find that it's easy to quit. Um, life. It's easy to quit a thing. It's easy to. It's easy to get offended. Um, it's easy to feel rejected. Uh, it, it's less. It's less easier to just have that grit and just stick stick around and just push through and just keep on. And it's 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 it takes more also for you to focus on others, uh, especially when you yourself are in need. And that's the amazing thing about you know that's in the bible and often i've heard where people speak about life is about opposites you know you've got to give to receive you've got to ask before before you'll get it's not just going to come you know so you've got to do something and i think it's 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 if you have always been on the receiving side it's it's harder for you to want to be in that position to give first because you've always received first before giving You've always uh, had somebody do for you before you do for others. Um, and I, I guess that is probably what has birthed this culture of fear of rejection. And it's normal. It's okay, you know. Um, also probably what's birthed this culture of, of offense. Um, and, you know, I've, I've also heard people speak about how offense is taken. Uh, it's not given. So offense is, 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 I think, to get to that unlimited mindset, we've got to let go of a couple of things. And one is let go, letting go of ourselves, letting go of just focusing on us, letting go of just doing for us and being able to take the focus of ourselves and look at others, look at those around and see how if we do for others, it'll be done back to us. You know, if you sow, that's when you reap. You spoke about... Um, how your dad, uh, your grandfather had 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 uh, had a farm and and was was using ox etc. to sow so that you guys can reap and, and make use of that that you have. But even though you have the talent, you still got to give of your talent for you to grow your talent. You know, um, and I think oftentimes it's good to be reminded about those opposites that are at play, and sometimes just check: Are you on the right end of that opposite? Are you the one? expecting to just receive and not give first or are you the one giving and you 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 kind of 
so so I think it, it's 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 I really like the way you had put it um, tonight, and and also the part about waiting instead of working, um, waiting for the right moment in life sometimes never actually comes. Sometimes you got to create that for yourself, and you got to get your hands dirty and do what it takes. And to do that, it, it's going to mean you're going to probably get rejected a couple of times. People are going to say no. People are going to offend you. People are going to um, push you in an area, and, and, and you won't feel inspired. But you got to you got to change the mindset and change that way of doing because it might have been not have been working, and try a different way, which is the way that we should have been learning. Uh, and should have been schooled on, which is give first and then receive. Make it about others before yourself. Um, I love, I yeah, love that thing in sales, Marvin. And you, I know that you you've been involved in sales for some part of your your life. And I say sales, well, in the broader sense. But uh, there, there's this saying um, that I've heard: some will, some won't. So what? <laughs> Every no is a step closer to a yes. And it's kind of having yes. that that sort of tenacity to 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 stick with something uh, long enough. You know, somebody said you can't do something wrong enough, long enough. You know, at some point there's got to be change that occurs. But as you've been talking about rejection, I, I was reminded by uh, something, and I can't remember where I heard this. It said hurt people hurt people and it just made me think that maybe re people who experience rejection actually perpetuate rejection <laughs> people who complain about being victims often become the victimizer uh, people who uh, look at alcoholics and criticize them often become alcoholics themselves it's an interesting uh, world that we're living in. Uh, so I think this shift from being what you were, what you were focusing on, being selfish to being selfless <coughs> is something that's, that's quite important. And, and um, you know, maybe Rian has got some uh, things to share over here because I, every time I think, every time I think I've died to self, <laughs> The moment, the moment I think I've conquered this thing, it's at that moment that something happens that demonstrates full and well that myself is alive and thriving. You know, um, mm. so so this 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 question, this um, this word that we often hear being spoken from pulpits and talked about by professional speakers and leaders like yourself and myself. <laughs> is all fine and well when we talk about it in words, but how do we practically get to the stage where we actually are dead to self? Rian, yeah, you are the expert now tonight. Um, <laughs> tell us, give us some tips on how do we die to self? So it's no longer about Rian, it's no longer about Glenn, it's no longer about Marvin, it's about something else. <laughs> you know what, uh, Glenn? <clears throat> One of the habits that I've uh, been busy with in the past few months is to to every day identify um, what in my life is a resource. Because I believe I've got one source, that's God, but he's using different uh, channels to resource me. And then every day also to identify the noise. And one of the things that I must say that I identified this past few weeks a lot of times is a noise is a sense of self-entitlement uh, uh, or a sense of entitlement. Yeah. And we like to say, we know you, we see it in the youngsters, they've got the sense of entitlement. But I must say, I see that sense of entitlement myself a lot. Because the sense of entitlement says, why must I now uh, not have electricity tonight or low chilling? How must I have such long hours? How, why must I suffer because of this? Why must I be treated in a certain way? And uh, why do people backstab me? You were referring to that earlier. And the moment all that wise is centered around myself, then I've got a, a sense of entitlement because my entitlement tells me I shouldn't be the one that's suffering now, yet I am. And uh, I think that, uh, you must always go back. And what I always realized, and uh, obviously you don't have the answers, and, and while we're in this side of, the, of heaven, we will keep on learning. Um, but but while, the, while I can still identify that I've got a sense of entitlement, 
it means that my views, my I'm not looking outside of myself. I'm basically busy looking at myself the whole time. And if I'm looking at myself like I'm doing now, my own little hands and my own little body and just me, my, myself, I don't even know what's going on around me. And then the sense of entitlement starts setting in because I look at my wonderful self and what I deserve. And, and I think a good uh, a test is always to say, what are you concerned about? What are your worries about today? What are your or your why are you are you unhappy? And if everything is about what I should have got and my entitlement, then you're definitely not at the place to be busy losing yourself. But we at the place that we can say, you know what, now I don't have a sense of any entitlement. Everything that happens to me, I'm looking at it in sense of a purpose. Uh, I started mm -hmm. dropping the, the, the words lost opportunities because I caught myself that the whole time I think, who there was an opportunity, but I lost it now. And I start training myself to say, you know what? Every opportunity is an opportunity. I can either learn from it or I can actually get the opportunity. I can get it to fruition. I can get it to work. And um, I, I think that is where we, we need to get to. We need to test ourselves every day. Identify the noise. And if your noise is all about yourself and you telling yourself that you're entitled to stuff and that you are the, the man or the woman or whatever, then you know that you are not busy losing yourself. But the moment you start seeing that the noise is actually about you moving out and looking at other people and you start getting concerned and looking outside yourself, then your own little problems disappear. And then you can get to a lifestyle where it's actually less about yourself and more about God and more about the people that around you and you can actually serve and become significant. This morning, this morning we were talking about um, <laughs> two, two, two young, young gentlemen in a country called the Netherlands. And um, mm -hmm. they had a, a, a big complaint this morning. And that was the train that they catch arrived 30 seconds late. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was just it was an interesting discussion because they they their whole world was focused on this one little thing. The, you know, these few seconds that the train arrived late because after five seconds late, people were wondering, is the train coming? <laughs> and of course, it was there 30 seconds after it was supposed to arrive and totally oblivious to the fact that there are many countries, many places where people don't even know what a train is. <laughs> and so. Yeah. I, I find it fascinating when, when, you, when you're in that place, I mean, that you talked about this evening of, of entitlement, entitlement or you expect certain things, you expect to see, you know, that, that advert that we have in South Africa, Marvin, where the, the, the person comes up to the, the counter um, at, you know, wanting to check in for her aeroplane ticket. And uh, she's been given a difficult time by the person on uh, the I don't know what you call them, the teller on the other side. And the, the, the politician leans to them and says, do you know who I am? <laughs> and the person then goes to the intercom and says, uh, ladies and gentlemen, can I have your attention, please? I've got somebody in front of me here who's forgotten who they are. <laughs> and I just, you know, I think uh, <laughs> sometimes we have that feeling, you know, you know, we want to say to somebody, do you know who I am? <laughs> maybe, maybe maybe we've said it even sometime in the past. Um, anyway, Marvin, your comments. <laughs> yeah, I, I love that word entitlement because that's, it can go two ways, you know. One is it's, it's an attitude and the other one is uh, it's, 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 it's also walking in that, 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 that of who you are. Um, and I think the, 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 the boundary between when it becomes arrogance and when it becomes walking in, in who you are is, is, is that thing about attitude. Um, I'm not sure even if, if attitude is the right word. But um, I, I, I love the game of golf uh, where no matter who you are, if you haven't had a good shot, you'll know you haven't had a good shot. Whether you are a pro and the pros also make mistakes. And uh, those that are novices and those that are beginners, because it, it levels out we'll the playing field. <coughs> so, sorry, Glenn, I missed that. I say everyone else will know as well when you've had a bad. And show. everyone exactly, exactly. Um, the, 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 sometimes you know, even in the game of golf, for example, 
um, playing with a couple of friends that are much better players than I am. Um, if I've hit a bad shot, they remind me, oh, it's you again, because the person right at the back has to get closest to. And and if I have hit the top of the ball and it's only rolled a couple of meters away, they remind me, oh, it's you again. <laughs> and it becomes a bit of a joke. Um, but it's in those those times, I guess, you know, when character comes out and you, 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 your test of who you really are when when that when in that moment the going gets tough because you can choose to either listen to what they say or you're gonna close out the noise from the outside and just take that new that shot as the start of that new shot so that you can get onto the green putt and, and move on um or you can just suck up what they're saying and 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 fall for that that they're saying because they're trying to get into your head and uh, mess you up Mark, and, uh, isn't, isn't it amazing in, can I, sorry, I, I'm interrupting you, but isn't it amazing in golf how, you know, along with this, this, this idea of entitlement, there's this, this other word that I'm thinking of, of confidence and pride. Um, sure. and, and what's amazing is, is in golf, because I've, I have, I've played golf three times. <laughs> so I know, I know everything there is to, about golf. The one thing that I know is that, when you hit the ball and it accidentally lands on the green, on the green, and when I say accidentally, it ha it lands there when you're actually looking at the green, you know. But when it lands on the green and you do better than everyone else, there's an element of pride that suddenly steps in. And then yes. when it comes to the next hole, <laughs> you've got the whole team looking for your ball because it's gone somewhere else because you allowed pride yes. or confidence <laughs> to step in. Yes. So. You know, you're touching on something here, and I think you know, I think those word the word pride is is uh, you know we talk about your pride being hurt. I think pride comes along nice and closely to this word entitlement and stuff. Uh, sorry, I interrupted you, but this, yeah, yeah, this... sure, sure. I, I think I just wanted to finish with a phrase that they use in golf. They say, "Don't let that one bad shot." Don't carry that one bad shot into the rest of into the rest of your game because otherwise it's going to be a long day and you'll definitely win the prize for longest day. <laughs> um, I like that. But you're right. You know when when you when you when you do do great on on on, on and it can be a fluke, it can be whatever. <coughs> and but the thing is, the way the rules work is, you would be the first to tee off, uh, and then everybody is watching you, and then the pressure is on. And you've really got to zone out of the noise around you and zone in on on, on, on that what you that that and, and it comes down to, an, to to the thing I was saying earlier, you know, the attitude. You can either choose to take every opportunity, every shot at getting to the green and every putt as a new opportunity to beat yourself. Because end of the day, while you are competing with others in your four ball, it's also more you competing with yourself. And the competition with yourself is, can I be better than the previous time? Can I do better uh, than, than, than the last time I, 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 I played or the last hole? Now, with my great experience in golf, um, <laughs> the one thing I did notice, the one thing I did notice was when I was relaxed and I wasn't trying to impress anybody and I wasn't worried about what they thought, and I just yes. went there and I focused on hitting the shot and I relaxed in the process. I was amazed <laughs> at how incredible I was as a golf player. But as soon as I was trying to impress somebody or trying to improve, prove to someone that I could be better than them, it just didn't work. And I think maybe that, that kind of is a little bit of a snapshot of this, the power of being selfless, uh, where you're no longer concerned about being embarrassed because you hit it into the bush. You just relax and you're there to enjoy the game. Uh, Rian, yes. I know you're, you're a runner like Marvin as well. <clears throat> you might just run in different places, but you, you both are in sport. Um, maybe just, you know, it's, it's amazing how quickly tonight's gone. Before, before you speak, I just want to uh, welcome Cliff. Uh, Cliff is one of our... Uh, associates living in Bulawayo or Zimbabwe. Uh, Cliff, uh, wonderful to have you with us this evening. Uh, so great to have you there. We trust that uh, Bulawayo is not going to be 
the same ever again. Um, and maybe it should be changed from a place of death <laughs> to a place of life. Um, and that's why you're there. So let's uh, let's 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 uh, fly the flag high. Great to have you part. And of course, as we said earlier, it's Madamba's action plan, isn't it, Rian? Uh, yeah, I'll say. Yeah, I'll say. <laughs> Over to you. I think maybe maybe just you know a couple of final words from each of you, and we'll call it a night. I think it's. This is really good yeah. stuff that we've been talking about. <clears throat> yes, uh, um, Glenn, I think, um, you know, it's good to speak about the quitting, but you you always need to replace what you quit with something else. And I think you you, you continually touched on that. Um, it's interesting when you said yellow today, uh, the why for yellow. You know, I was thinking about the mining, my mining days, what used to be. We, we, we spoke about the yellow machines and we, you actually said we need to stop waiting, start working. And when I thought about yellow machines, I was thinking about working because, you know, it's yellow machines that's actually keeping the mines going. But um, when uh, Marvin has, has now um, spoken uh, about the, the golf and the focus and everything, uh, I was just thinking about something else as well. And, and I know Marvin is a cyclist, uh, but I know he likes to cycle on the road. He must, I'm not sure if he's cycling. Maybe he's cycling in the mountains as well. Marvin, if you aren't, you must start. But... Um, <laughs> Uh, it, when, you, when you are a mountain biker, the one thing I learned, and I, I'm doing a lot of mountain biking, is that the bicycle will go where you are looking. So what you need to do, what they always say, especially when you go downhill, you need to look at the road where you want to be. You mustn't be looking at the big rocks or the trees or the stuff that you don't want to go to. Because the moment you start looking at the tree, Guess what's happening? Your handles bars also go to the tree and you end up in the tree or you end up on the other side of the rocks that you didn't want to be in or you are in the wrong lane if you're on a low, um, single track and you watch this big, um, uh, you know, whatever is next to the road that you don't want to be in. You always end up where your eyes are. And I think it's the same for tonight. As you are quitting the things that's keeping you away from your purpose, Get your purpose nice, uh, your focus nicely fixed on your purpose, and you will get to your purpose. But if you keep on focusing on everything that's stealing your purpose, then you will end up with everything there. If you focus on everything that, that go wrong, it will go wrong. So stop focusing on next to the little single track and focus on the single track, and you'll get downhill safely and you'll enjoy your ride. Um, so yeah. I think that was that's what. Uh, um, Marvin reminded me of. Oh, thank you, uh, Glenn. Rian, now, now I know for the first time in my life why I've got a nose. <laughs> it's, to <laughs> point at, it's to point at where I'm going. You know, uh, uh, I, 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 I wear, I wear multifocal lenses and, um, and my optometrist says, you know, you've got to point your nose where you want to look and what you want to see. <laughs> and you've just, re you've just uh, reinforced that. So now we know the purpose of the nose is to point you in the right direction. <laughs> yes. Thanks for sharing it. That's such a great, great uh, message there. Marvin, a last word from your side. Thanks. Uh, Rian, I am a mountain biker. I actually prefer mountain biking over road. I look forward to joining you on on a on a on a, on a. just to to also add to what you're saying in terms of where you're looking. I I know they also say in mountain biking, look five meters ahead. Don't just look where the rock is, or look five meters ahead because you, you need to always preempt what's coming. Um, and that says to me, don't look down. Don't look at me. Look ahead. Yeah. Look look because the, the further away you look. The less distractions you have around you, uh, the someone that looks gonna, I don't know, there's somebody next to you or whatever, and 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 I think if I wanted to do, just finish on a couple of things, I like what Glenn was saying. You know, when you when you're most relaxed, that's and, and that's actually what happened to me last week. I, I I was at a conference and that had a golf day, and uh, I got to the point where I just said screw it, and when I got to that point, I actually hit the best shot of the day. And I was most relaxed, and I just I just had this don't care attitude, um, and my technique was back. So you know, when when you're trying to be all perfect and trying to do things like to the T, ah, forget about having right. fun. That's where that word comes from. <laughs> <laughs> then then 
you 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 end up not being at being and up operating and enjoying the game and and actually just just being being your best so i, I wanted to say relax rejection is going to happen relax offense is going to come but just keep moving look five meters ahead keep your eye on that like riano was saying that's that's what will get you over any obstacles that come well, I think I think you should look further ahead. For all of those of you watching this recording and listening to this session, look forward to next week Wednesday. <laughs> so, because next week Wednesday we can have another great session. And you know, these sessions for me are, are like are like it's like seed germinating, because everything that you guys have shared this evening is just like you know, it's like the birth of another talk coming. It's it's the birth of a, a whole new chapter. And, and this is the value of us having these kind of discussions, you know. Um, so I, I would encourage those of you who watch the recording, share your comments with us. We'd love to engage with you. It's been so uh, good to have you join us, Cliff and Simbo, this evening. And uh, I'm looking forward to this journey or the inspiration that quitting something which implies that you're starting something new, that your quit will lead to a start, and that that start will lead to a finish. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Marvin, Rion, such a pleasure to have you joining. Have a wonderful evening listening to that beautiful purr of the new form of electricity in the background, uh, Rion. <laughs> And we look forward to the Wi-Fi for electricity, which is coming soon. So have a great evening. Thank you so much. We will end with a short little video. And uh, I hope that you also feel the same way that I do in this short message. Good night, everyone. Cheers. Bye-bye. Today, for me, today, for you, today for each of us, is an opportunity and an invitation to step into a world of abundance where your life matters, where your vision makes a difference, where the world will know that once upon a time in the past there was a man or a woman who rose to the calling of God in their life and made the impact that they were designed to make. And you have that ability. Just die to self, surrender to Him, and become significant. I couldn't be more excited for you. I could not be more excited about the future. Because every person that you equip to take that step of putting a plan together for their life, a plan that is aligned with the desires of their heart. Those people, those children, young and old, are going to come alive. And they're going to cause a ripple that goes through time. That impacts the lives of others. Make the choice today <laughs> to live a life of significance.